All right. How lucky are we to be joined here by royalty, of course, the Black Widow, the winner of Survivor Micronesia, the Duchess of Deceit, the Mistress of Murder. It's Parvati Shell Party. How are you? I'm really loving all my new nicknames. So many. So, so many. So many. I'm like, I, I could just decide who do I want to be this morning when I wake up? Yes. A black Widow, a Mistress of Murder. What's calling? What's calling? Okay. Well, we're calling you because we want to hear about everything that went on on The Traders. How are you feeling after it's all over looking back? Man, I feel sad. I really wish I would have been able to stick around a little longer. It's been such a fun, kind of really unexpected ride um, of excitement and adventure. When I said yes to go do the show, I was thinking like, oh yeah, this will be a fun game. I loved the fact that Alan Cumming was the host. He's an icon. And the outfits and the castle and the different kinds of people from different shows. I thought that would be a blast. I did not anticipate the level of enthusiasm from audiences and fans. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool. I feel like of all the cast members, you were definitely the one that stuck out to me that really le le what am I trying to le leaned into the aesthetic of uh, the castle with the outfit. Can you speak a little bit on the outfits you had chosen out for this uh, venture? Look, I got the memo. This is a <laughs> campy theatrical experience. It's like Knives Out. It's like Clue. It's like these game shows that I grew up adoring. And I used to play murder mystery parties when I was in high school with my friends. And we would wear these glam beaded gowns and these outfits and furs and it was we would just go over the top so when they called me to do traders i knew that i was going to go hard into the character aspect especially because i could be picked as a trader and i wanted to like do it big you know so i chose blair waldorf as my fashion inspiration it was either between her or moira rose from schitt's creek and i mean she's the best but i didn't know if i could pull off all the wigs so i went with the headbands instead <laughs> yes you understood the assignment i i understood the assignment loud and clear yes okay parvati i'm curious to know you had like a day when you were a faithful before you got recruited how do you think you would have done as one of the faithful i think i would have i think i would have done okay as one of the faithful had Larsa not called me out immediately at the round table. But because I already come into these games with such a big target, I already have to work hard, harder than other people to earn people's trust. And then when Larsa put an extra target on me at the round table, I was like, I gotta be a fave. I gotta be a trader now because people are already gonna be suspicious of me. I thought I would have a harder time. Had that not happened, listen, I am really good at telling when people are lying. I'm really good at it. We know, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be a great faithful if people would trust me enough. When you walked into the turret, take the cloak down, you see in front of you, Dan and Phaedra, what were your thoughts on the two of them being your teammates for this journey? I It was epic. I was cackling. I was gleeful. It was so exciting. Phaedra was such um an enigma to me from the moment i met her she had millions of jobs she was a housewife she was a lawyer she was a mortician and a reiki master and i was like who is this person and then she went to university of georgia which i also went to university of georgia so i just found her endlessly um, fascinating and her outfits and her like you can't even see her eyeballs she's like a muppet she's like a character like like who are you in there so I was like, oh, she's going to be a great trader. And then Dan, I thought, was this strategic genius from Big Brother um, that I'd heard about. But I hadn't watched his seasons of Big Brother. I just knew from other people. So he had a similar reputation to me on Survivor, but him on Big Brother. So I was like, this is a dynamic duo. Barbara, how does this all change if going back to that one night when Dan says, all right, I let me cook. I got to get my shot tonight, okay? I'm going after uh, Pete. He says that I know where the shield is going to be. And you said, I, I think he's lying. He said, no, trust me. I got this. If Dan listens to you that night, 
Does this all turn out radically different? Radically different, I think, for all of us, because Dan really going for Bergy was the trader's downfall because then Dan didn't want to go after me and take me out at the round table. So he pinpointed Phaedra and he blew up every single trader's game with that move. I think Phaedra had a, a long runway all the way to the end had Dan not done that. And now she's going to have to fight a lot harder. Um, and for me, it was like I was lumped in with Dan with that lie. So with Bergy trying to be murdered and then not be murdered, it just implicated me right alongside Dan. And that was something that was really, I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. After Dan leaves and, and y'all go back to the turret, we see that you get the opportunity to recruit and you said, I want this pilot on our team. I want to bring him in. Can you speak more on to uh, what got you to that decision and how you felt about it? Yes, it was a decision made fueled with rage and vengeance. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look, I can't always be chill all the time in these yeah. games. I was so annoyed with Peter. He would not stop. He was like a dog with a bone. And I was like, okay, dude, like you want to play with me? I'm going to play with you right back. If you don't take this um, deal, I'm going to kill you. First chance I get. And that was in my mind. But I thought like, also, I was like really embracing the villain um, aspect of being a trader. And I was like, what if we can really turn this good guy into a bad guy? How fun would that be? It was like um, getting like Spider-Man to go dark, you know? Mm -hmm. Could I, could we do it? And how fun would that be to watch that kind of play out? Because what I really love about traders is, it's the um, the polarity of the contestants in there. It's like faithfuls are doing it for the right reasons and the traitors are the bad guys. And you have to have this tension between the both ends in order to make the drama like fun to watch. So for me, I was like, this is the most dramatic we can get. And if this guy turns, this is gonna be really fun. Also, I was so backed into a corner at that point. I thought any other move I made would just be like watery. And it wouldn't really make any, it wouldn't make enough of a splash to keep the, like get the heat off of me or to create enough chaos or, or drama in the house for me to stick around longer. So I was just, I was doing the best I could with a very, very little support. Harv, the last kill you got in was Bergy. Was there a real temptation to go in a different direction than Bergy? Maybe go for somebody like Trishel on that last kill you got in? Oh, Trishel and I had kind of a good bond, like an unspoken sort of, I got you, you got me kind of bond. I didn't want to kill her because she was like the, I didn't have many allies in the castle. <laughs> she was like the one who was like not gunning for me. So I was like, I'm not going to kill her, but um, MJ would have been a good person to kill, but MJ was really tight with Phaedra. So honestly, Bergy was kind of the only option we had. Um, we had noticed in the last couple episodes, I feel like they've shown more of you and John interacting quite a bit, even up until the last time we saw the two of you speak, where you put on a little bit of acting on him. How is John in this castle? How was interacting with this guy? He he and I had a really kind of sweet relationship. A lot of other people were really frosty towards me. Like they thought I was a traitor, so they avoided me. They wouldn't talk to me. Or if I came into the room, they would walk up and walk out and leave. Or they were just point blank rude. But John was like always very sweet and complimentary and telling me how strong I was. And he's like, your spirit is unflagging and you're the you're the essence of Margaret Thatcher herself. And I was like, wow, that's not a compliment, John. Like, oh, being Margaret Thatcher, she's like, no strong leader. Be, she's a strong leader. Yeah, great. But like also not very like warm and delightful. Anyway, he would, he and I like had this kind of like banter when the cameras were off or when we weren't gaming, we would have conversations and he was, I shared a lot with him about my life. So that like conversation that we had where I was teary with him, it wasn't out of nowhere. Like we'd have, we'd had multiple conversations about like, the things that I'd gone through personally in his life as well. Um, so I thought I had enough of a rapport built with him to do that. Otherwise it would have been just like kind of whack. Mm -hmm. 
but he was such an interesting person because in the very beginning of the game, there was a lot of suspicion on him because of his weird breathing at the round table. And everyone was like, oh, do you have asthma or not? And he's like, do I? No, I don't know what's happening. He was always so confused. He felt, he was sort of like the court jester of the castle. Like he would fall in every challenge. He would run to get the ball too soon before Alan told us and Alan would like make a cheeky joke about him. And he made us laugh. But so there was suspicion on him at first. But then like the second or third round table, he holds up his goblet and his glass of water that we have at the table. And he's like, I swear on the lives of my family and children, I am a faithful to the bitter end. And then everyone was like, okay, well, we believe he's a faithful. And everyone like, they were like, you can't say things like that. Like that is going to mess with the game. And every faithful is going to say that. And so you can't say things like that anymore. So he was called out for saying that, but it was, the damage was done. He was already like, everybody was like, okay, this guy is not messing around. He's a faithful. And there was some, like, there was some interesting dynamics happening in the castle with the men mm -hmm. where they really leaned, like I leaned into the villainous kind of like cackling, having a good time being mischievous. And they leaned into this moral and ethic superiority that was like, we're faithfuls and we're, we're the good guys. And we're here on the side of justice and goodness. And they were like, we'd rather die faithful. We'd rather sacrifice ourselves than betray our fellow mm -hmm. faithfuls. It was so like, some kind of government um, experiment. It reminded me like the prison experiment where they yeah. put people in roles. They really took that on. And I thought that was so interesting because on heroes versus villains on survivor, yeah. similar things happen. Sure. Yeah. When you categorize people, they tend to really fit into their role and go for it. A lot of the heroes acting dumb. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Let's let's go back with heroes versus villains. You came in with Sandra, and there was maybe a little tense at first, but it sounds like that you two worked out your differences. But we didn't really get to see too much of you two interacting and working together on the show. Can you talk a little bit about what your working relationship uh, was with Sandra in the game? Yeah, the thing with traders that makes it uniquely different to Survivor is. Traders is a TV show first, and then it's a game second. So with Traders, it's like, okay, we're filming a lot. There's a lot of like stop downs, change your outfits. We're going to go do this challenge. Now we're going to get in these cars and we're going to go the Land Rovers and we're going to go back to the castle. And then you got to change your outfit and get back into the um, castle in the different rooms and strategize. So there was so much like logistic coordinating that was happening with the show that made it... Um, difficult to have a lot of game conversations there was like survivor you have so much downtime on the beach you can kind of wander off and have a conversation with someone without it being too suspicious traders is not like that there is a hot spotlight on you constantly as a contestant and for me people when people were like really starting to become more and more certain that i was a trader most people avoided me because you don't you don't want to hang out with a trader it makes you look suspicious people were suspicious of Sandra as well. So had Sandra and I spent a lot of time connecting or really only time connecting, it would have looked worse for her knowing she's a faithful. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't want to get too close to her because I, I didn't want to murder her. I wanted to keep her in the game because she wasn't coming after me. And I felt like, she, and she would always kind of like randomly throw me a bone here and there when we would like cross each other in the hallway. She'd be like, all they got on you is that like, you told Dan about the shield. And so she was like throwing me little like treats, mm -hmm. but, um, and I was protecting her, but that was kind of the extent of our capacity. I think if Sandra and I had a chance to play a second time, then it's like, you just learn a lot the first time. Like for me, I just learned so much the first time I'm absorbing information. Like, okay, I would change this. I would do this differently. It would be okay to take time with this person here. But it was like so much craziness so fast. And I was so freaked out holding the lie of being a traitor. I wasn't thinking straight most of the time. I was just like trying to keep myself like my feet on the floor because I felt like I was levitating out of my skin most of the time while I was playing the game.
<laughs> so I was like, okay, settle, calm, calm, calm. How do you have a conversation with someone when you feel like you can't even speak a word, right, anymore? Like, so yeah, I'm, I think had San if Sandra and I had the opportunity to play again, we could make some more strategic moves. So then I think you just answered the question when I'm asking it. Um, you get the phone call for another returning season, get a second chance in, are you in or out? Oh, oh, I would do it again. I mean, look, enough time goes by and I forget the trauma. (laughs) 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 Although it's just so fun to watch. It's like the difference between playing survivor after I'm done with survivor, it's so intensely grueling and it's so suffering that I don't really want to watch it afterwards because I kind of know what to expect and it's so but with traders I'm like oh it's such a fun show to watch like you get to watch the outfits you get to watch people looking so uncomfortable like MJ trying to get into the room with Peter and them and them saying can you give us a minute and she's like I don't want to miss anything and then just (laughs) freezes I'm like I wasn't there for that moment but I'm glad I got to see it (laughs) as a viewer so I would play again just to be able to watch it Barb, I know you have to run. Uh, thank you for making some time to uh, talk with us. That I read the feature on you from paper, and I just want to say how happy I am for everything that's going on in your world and all of the uh, amazing things that are happening for you. So, Barbara, thank you for being here, and we're so happy for you. Oh, man, thanks, Rob. I'm so delighted. I'm in a really good spot. Okay, Barbity, thank you so much. Take care, okay? Okay, bye. Bye.